Resurrection Day Sunday, otherwise known as Easter. Right. Happy Resurrection. Happy Resurrection. Happy Resurrection Day, Happy Day, Sam. Happy Resurrection Day. Right. Mom, should I have Happy Easter. You guys are all aware that Easter eggs has nothing to do with the resurrection. Who can tell us what today's really all about? Today is about when God died on the cross, when he rose from the grave. Anybody else? Jamal? Today is the, the third day. This is the day Jesus resurrected. And he offered redemption to everybody. We all get salvation. That's right. Jesus died on the cross to give everyone a second chance to make things right and to praise him. Okay, we're gonna say a prayer and then we're gonna read the Bible and that's how we're gonna start off our Easter Sunday And then we're gonna head off to a farm to do an Easter egg hunt Lord, we're here together as a family to Celebrate your resurrection and we thank you for all that you've done so that we have a chance for redemption And we also pray that in the future that we stay together and continue to Worship you and be closer to you in Jesus name I want to thank God for this day and all the blessings that he gave to us. I pray that we all live long, happy, and successful lives in his name. I thank him for our salvation and the redemption that he's given us and for his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. I pray that each day we all get closer to him and strive for a heart of his own. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Jesus name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. Also for um, dying for us on the cross, that we have a second chance to obey you, Lord, and give you more respect. I hope it's for about on this point on, we live a long life and happily in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for dying on the cross for us so we can have a second chance to make things right. I thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us so that we can have a chance to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sarah? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Your turn, Charlie. <laughs> Your turn, Charlie. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your turn, Josh. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Jordan. Thank you for dying by the cross. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross and dying for our sins, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me with such a beautiful family and an awesome husband. Thank you, Jesus, for all of my kids, everything you've blessed me with, Jesus. Thank you, I ask that you continue to bless and protect us all the days of our lives, Lord Jesus. And today we celebrate you, Jesus, that you went to the cross for our sins and you rose on the third day, that you defeated death, that death could not hold you in the grave. We are so grateful, Lord Jesus, that you loved us and you went to the cross and you bared all of the suffering and the pain for our sins, Lord Jesus, that we may have a chance to grow closer to you, to be in heaven with you one day, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to continue to guide our steps so that we can live in the way that you want us to live, so that we can glorify your holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, they said, Not on the feast day, what will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? 
And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and made they made ready for Passover. He said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand, his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. When Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Yeah, I'm just going to stop for a second just so I can explain to the little ones what's going on. Um, what's going on is Jesus is having the Last Supper with the disciples, Joshua. <clears throat> And he's foretelling that one of them will betray him. The disciples are the men who follow Jesus and they follow him where he went he, and preached. They're like really good friends to Jesus. They love him and they're really good friends and one of them are going to betray him. And Jesus, since Jesus is God, he can tell things before it even happens. So he's sitting at the Last Supper and he says that one of you are going to betray me. And they're all sitting looking at each other. It's 12 of them at the table and they're all sitting looking at each other. Is it me? Is it me, Jesus? Is it me? And they're wondering who is it in the room that's going to betray our Lord Jesus? And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of... Judas betrays him, and Peter is going to deny him three times. I would right. never deny Jesus. I would, we, we would never deny Jesus. Because disciples. Yeah. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And we, he went a little farther, and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father... If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Uh, the soldiers came in to get him, right? Yeah. And who was leading them? Who knows? Judas. Judas was leading them. He accepted 30 pieces of silver coins to give up Jesus' location, to let the soldiers know where Jesus was so they can, they can come in and capture him. He that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. <laughs> Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and he kissed him. Okay, so let me explain that. The reason why G Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss is because G Jesus eluded these people for a very long time. It wasn't time yet. He had to wait for the prophecy to be fulfilled before he met this, the day that he's at now. The soldiers were looking for him for a while, so Judas kissed him. That way, if anybody else spoke up and said, oh, I am Jesus to try to defend the Lord, then it wouldn't work because they know the person that Judas kissed is the real Jesus. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? What was the temple of God that Jesus was referring to that he could destroy and build back up in three days? He was talking about his body. He was talking about his, by his own body. Jesus was the temple of God that he was referring to. Do you understand that? So they thought that he was blaspheming or he was doing something really, really awful by saying he can destroy the building temple of God and build it back up in three days. But he was talking about himself and they didn't understand that. Because at the end of the day, these brick and mortar buildings that you see honoring God, it, that's a good thing to go and worship God there. But at the end of the day, your body, your temple, that is where God is. He is within you, not in that building, okay? That building could crumble and fall from an earthquake or, or anything. It can crumble, it's not going to last, but your soul will last. 
Jesus, God is within you, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto them, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. And when they say rent his clothes, that means he kind of like ripped his clothes. Like he's really, he's really like upset about this. Like, how dare you blaspheme God like that? Mm -hmm. So he's accusing Jesus of, of blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold now, ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. So they're like, we don't need any more witnesses. I've heard, we've heard enough. Did you just hear what he said? So then did they spit in his face and buffeted him and others smote him with the palms of their hands. So now they're hitting him. They're spitting on Jesus, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Basically, Peter's spying to see what's going to happen to Jesus. What are they going to do with him? <clears throat> and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. So she's asking, Weren't you with Jesus too? Weren't you one of his people? She's asking Peter. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Part of the reason why Peter's doing this is because he's afraid. He's afraid if he admits that he knows Jesus, that he, he's probably going to befall the same fate as Jesus. They're going to capture him, and they're going to beat him up, and spit on him, and, and put him to death as well. So he's scared. And so <clears throat> out of fear, he's denying Jesus. But Jesus already prophesied that it would happen before it even happened. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. So somebody else is pointing Peter out and saying, yeah, this guy was with Jesus of Nazareth too. And again, he denied with an oath. I wasn't with him. I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know the man, he said. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. So now this is the third time. So I'm saying, yeah, you, you are one of them, aren't you? Then began he to curse and to swear. Okay, now he's really lost his mind now because he's cursing and he's swearing now. Because he's like, oh, bro, everybody keeps coming to me. They're recognizing me. I don't want them to recognize me. I don't want to get in any trouble here. I just basically came to make to see, you know, what was going to happen to Jesus. But now all of these people that are recognizing me, now he's really upset. So he's swearing and he's cursing and saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Wouldn't you cry? Wouldn't you cry? At that moment, he heard Jesus' voice in his head, the words that he told him that he was going to deny him three times before the cock crows. And when he remembered that and heard that voice in his head, he went away and he cried bitterly. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And then they had bound him, and they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and bought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. So now Judas feels guilty. He repented and he doesn't even want the money saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. So they don't care. Basically, they're saying, we don't care. What, what does that mean to us? And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. That's how bad he felt about it. He, he committed suicide, basically. They're like, you took the money. We don't care. None of that means anything to us about innocent blood and all of that. We don't care. We got what we wanted and you helped us to accomplish it. And Judas just could not live with that. So he threw the silver pieces down at, in the temple and he just left and he went and he hanged himself to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had them a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Barabbas was a really bad criminal. He was going to give them 
uh, an option to either exchange Barabbas for Jesus. So who do you think the people are going to choose? Barabbas. Barabbas or Jesus? Barabbas. Barabbas, yes. Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things to stay in a dream because of him. Pilate's wife was having dreams. God was showing her things so that she could warn her husband to not have Jesus' blood on his hands, that for him not to be the one to execute Jesus. So basically, Pilate washed his hands of it, and he's going to leave it up to the people to decide. And of course, we all know how that story ends. They're going to choose the criminal over Jesus, having Jesus released. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should take Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Pilate said, saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And then the governor says, Why? What evil has this man done to you that was so bad that you would rather a criminal be released among you than for Jesus to walk among you? But they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. So they're determined, they want him to be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a turmoil was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. See ye to it. So he's saying, I don't, I don't have anything to do with this. You guys chose, you see to it. Basically Pilate didn't find any fault in Jesus either. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. That's crazy. They said, and on their children. You hear that, Sam? <laughs> His blood be on us and on our children. Wow. Then released he, Barabbas, unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of Jews. They're whipping him, they're mocking him, and it's pretty sad. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And when they were come into a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. Why? Because it's a bitter liquid. Mm -hmm. And it was really nasty. It made, instead of making you satisfying the taste, it made you feel even worse mm. and thirsty. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were the two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou dost destroy the temple and build it in three days, save thyself. So they're like shaking their heads, like. Again, they're mocking him. Yeah, and saying, Thou that destroys the temple and build it in three days, save thyself. Like, if you could destroy God's temple and build it back in three days, why can't you save yourself? If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Jesus can, if he really wanted to, if God really wanted him to do that, he could do that. But the, the prophecy has to be fulfilled in order for mankind to have salvation. Because if he had come off that cross, like these people were telling him, oh, daring him basically to do it, if you're supposed to be God, come off the cross, save yourself. Had he done that, you would not have an opportunity to be saved. Only through that whole entire act that God went on that cross to bear our sins were we able to have salvation. 
Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him, what the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. So basically, he healed sick people, he made blind people see, but he can't save himself. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. They're saying basically, if you are who you say you are, come down off the cross right now and then we'll believe you. That would just be the devil because the devil doesn't want any one of us in here to have salvation, okay? He doesn't want any one of us to have any opportunity to be redeemed or to be with God. So of course the devil would want to tempt God like that, but that's not gonna happen. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And I'm not probably pronouncing that correctly, but he's asking a question. That is to say, and here goes the interpretation of it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, the man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He allowed his spirit to leave him now. And the whole the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Okay, that's pretty scary. Now, if nobody believed that he was who he said he was when he was alive, when he gave up the ghost, and that there was an an earthquake basically you have to know something's up that this this person had to be somebody powerful and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose dead people came out of the graves the graves were open and sweet? many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto them, and to many. That's wild. <laughs> now, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly. So now the centurions are afraid. Now they are afraid. They were very afraid. They said they feared greatly, saying truly, this was the Son of God. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. So they're meeting with Pilate again, right? Saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, they're talking about Jesus, they're calling him a deceiver, when he was alive, after three days I will rise again. So they knew, some of them knew what he meant by that. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be <clears throat> made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. So basically he's saying, please make sure that you secure the grave, because we don't want his disciples to come in there and steal the body out and pretend that, oh, Jesus rose up so that they can go spread that around. Then everybody's really going to be believing that Jesus was the son of God. And we don't, he already did enough damage when he was here. We don't want it to be even worse now that he's gone by people thinking that he rose from the dead. They put guards in front of him. So that no one could come and take the body. Exactly. And in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, another one. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. For fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The guards, what happened to them? They went to sleep. 
Like it's like like yeah, they like out. they were like so they were like they were so afraid they were like in shock. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. The uh, guards went back and they told the chief priests everything that they witnessed. They had a meeting. They assembled the elders and they had a meeting. And they gave large money unto the soldiers. So what do you think just happened there? They paid them to be quiet. Thank you. They paid them to keep the story, the true story to themselves. They gave large sum of money saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away. So basically they want the guards to spread the rumor that the disciples came and stole him because they don't want the people to know the truth that Jesus did rise from the dead. So they'd rather feed people a lie. Isn't that pretty sad? that they conspire like that and they lie. It's pretty sad, but I mean, this same sort of thing goes on today where you have people in you know, certain positions in the church and you know, they're basically hypocrites and they lie. That's the way of the world. Isn't that's it? just the way of the that's world, the yes. World. That's the way of the world. So you cannot put a whole lot of faith in you know, men who are, even if they're leaders of a church or something like that, because they were leaders in their temple back then. They were supposedly religious leaders of their time. And look at the cons how they conspired against Jesus and how they, even when the truth comes to them, they still insist on making up lies. They thought that they were going to save face. Right. Basically, they didn't want to right. look like fools. They didn't want to look like the fool, exactly. So they'd rather lie to so cover it up. they'd rather lie and cover it all up. Exactly. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Everything is a transfer of energy. And that's how like God works through everything. His energy is within everything. Like let's say like a plant. Even if that plant gets like blown away or eaten by another animal, it's not getting destroyed. It goes through the digestive system and goes back out and serves as nutrients or something else. Or like, let's say the animal gets eaten by something else. Mm -hmm. Like that matter is always being recycled and keeps going. Like when Jesus died on the cross, mm -hmm. why he like shifted energy throughout the whole world and the whole world like shook and stuff like that. And like the weather and climate changed because that energy was just spread out throughout the whole world. Okay, very interesting. Like even when he was in the garden, he didn't necessarily want to go through, you get what I'm saying, the pain and stuff like that. Because like he, of course he had like human skin and he was just God in human form. He was the highest concentration of God's like pure energy. Mm -hmm. And how like God made us in his image. And I, I was like, man, I feel like that's part of the reason why we are the way we are. Cause like no matter how anybody slices or dices, people want to be like acknowledged and like, you know, praised in a sense. That's why I feel at least God made humans because he wanted to be praised, but he didn't make us like robots mm -hmm. because like, that's just like being alone. If you have a bunch of yes people, even people in general, you don't want a bunch of yes men around you. You want people who's going to make your own choices. I mean, the best love would be that somebody loved that you, you by choice. By choice. You don't want to And make, not because you were forced. Exactly. Because that's not really true love. Machines without free will. You, you know feel saying? like, okay, yeah, I get it. So I feel like he, that's why he made humans, you know. To praise him, and like it says in the Bible, God is a jealous God and wants to be 
praised and acknowledged. And I feel like because we have pieces of him within us as well. Mm -hmm. And that's like even why people like they crave for like acknowledgement because we have those pieces of him in us. If he made everything and he's within everything, then he, he had, of course, he made the devil as well. You know, he has those pieces of God within him, too. And he just got he just got a little Overboard. jealous. Like he just got like because, of course, like uh, it says in the Bible, like he was in charge of like praise and all that stuff, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in charge of all that. He's like, man, I want that. Like, at the end of times, it doesn't necessarily say that God's going to destroy the devil. It says that he's going to cast him into an eternal abyss for torment for eternity. I don't think that God wants a soul or a spirit to be destroyed. Like, I don't think that happens. Like, even when you die, like, your spirit or your soul leaves your body and then it goes from... I mean, obviously, like... If God can do anything, like I'm sure if he wanted to, he could probably destroy his soul. But I don't think that's like the point of it all. Basically, it's like eternal death or eternal yeah. life. Yeah. So. Okay, so what would be eternal torment for like the devil? Like what? Because if he is death like all that. It would be like but look, separation. I death think that's is, what it that, is. That, like, that's death, just, separation. That's too easy. I think the ultimate torment, because at the end of the day, what, he wants that same acknowledgement that God has people like praising him and he's gonna be cast into an abyss with him and all his followers calling out to Jesus and asking begging for Jesus. He's gonna have to <laughs> what a turn of events. He doesn't even know that wow. he's trying to bring all these people with him to mm -hmm. call, add to his tor torment. Like all those people are gonna be calling out and praying to God and begging to God he's gonna and trying to, to hear and he's just gonna have to hear. He's just gonna it's be there and that's gonna all get to him. He's gonna even try to cry out to God and that, mm. that light is not gonna be there. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Being without God, like being in sin, is just the absence of God's pure energy. Eternal death and being separated from God. Mm -hmm. Like physical Complete death is being separated from your body, and then eternal death is you being separated from God. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that it's like evolution can't be a part of the creation. No, it is. Like, it can be. I believe it is. Like the Big Bang Theory. I don't know why people believe it, like atheists believe it, because that still doesn't answer the question of what create. Because if there was a bunch of particles just floating around, you know, and it was just some random reaction like okay what created those particles how are they just there that leads to even more questions mm -hmm. people want to believe those types of things but they don't want to think that it's from a higher being that right someone yeah. created or made they don't that think it was it was they orchestrated just want to think it just happened by chance by chance think, yeah like Everything. with the things like how your body works and how Mommy, things are like, I have a question. Well, everything's gonna be